My name is Danielle Applestone and I am CEO of Other Machine Company in San Francisco. We build desktop machines that make manufacturing accessible to everyone. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening this week in science? We build a machine which is a small version of what you might see in a big factory, but it's something that you can carry around and you can cut high precision 3D parts out of whatever material you put in there. So metal or wood or circuit boards. Most of our first customers are doing electronics with it. They're making their own circuit boards. You know, you can get you can get a circuit board in your hands in the same day, which is really, you can't do that if you are mailing away and waiting for it to come back, uh, come back to you. We're looking to go towards Okay, well, if you want to make jewelry, how does it change what's possible for you? If you're designing products, what's possible for you now that wasn't before? In the more traditional educational environments, there's not a lot of ways to make abstract concepts physical. And we've had a lot of people who, you know, they'll, they'll put a block of wax in and they'll do something that's just mathematic. So they will have an equation that's kind of, you know, propagated over time and a 3D representation of that. And they'll take that file and they'll cut it out and what it looks like is you're like, oh, that's an equation, but actually it looks like a droplet of water landed in this piece of wax. I am from a science background, I'm a materials scientist, and I used to do work on battery materials. So speaking from my own experience, I was always building little jigs so that I could build batteries in a more regular fashion, like assemble batteries to do testing. I was always making these little circuits that could, you know, charge up a battery to a specific way, like all of those things you could do with this machine. And in fact, we had one of our early Kickstarter backers, he was a person who was doing MEMS research, like microfluidics experiments in his lab at Davis. And so he's cutting glass. He, he modified his machine to have a vacuum attachment so he could just put a glass wafer on. And now instead of having to go get trained in the clean room and pay hourly in the clean room, he could just cut the pieces that he wanted instead of using you know, hydrofluoric acid or whatever it was that he needed, making very tiny cuts in glass um, and totally accelerated his research because he could just draw an in Inkscape, which is like free Illustrator, draw an in Inkscape the shape that he wanted, you know, like 15 micron kind of resolution and cut it. And so he, you know, he's basically graduating early and coming to work with us because, you know, he was so, he's like, wow, I love this research, but also this machine has changed the way I do research and I want to help other people do that. We take slabs of recycled milk jugs, which is a, a high density polyethylene. We put those slabs down on a, on a giant CNC machine and we program it to cut out the frame of, of the other mill. And so we make those, we can make about six a day of those frames. So we work with about 400 people within a 200 mile radius for all of the components because we're a small scale manufacturer. Essentially all of these machines are like handmade one by one or 12 by 12 at this point. And so we take electronics that we get from a local supplier and motors and a motor controller board and bent metal pieces and windows that have been laser cut. And we, in, in an old, basically a retrofitted pipe organ factory, we assemble this high precision machine and then we test it and then mail it directly to the customer. That's, that's it. That's the entire process. So we want it to be a thing that you learn, you learn with your children, you pass on to them. Maybe you donate it to a school or whatever when you don't need it, but it's gonna be there for you. And mostly what you're doing is just learning that entire time. I think that there is one really fundamental experience that people are going to have with it, which is a digital file can become a physical thing. And so learning that you can design a part digitally and you can make it and you can perfect it and make as many as you want, that transforms any person into a manufacturer. It's, you know, it's great to be able to build a tool that can help someone do that. That's really satisfying. What's happening? What's happening this week in science?